Hi, my name is Mary Burley. I'm the Chief Educator at the Norman Rockwell Museum, and I'm really happy to be here today with my friend Stephanie Plunkett, who is the Deputy Director and Chief Curator. And we are here today to talk about some really wonderful images. Um, this, these images were done by Norman Rockwell in 1944, and they tell a sequential story. The name of the images are America at the Poles. And we're going to start with the first main image. Uh, and we're going to talk about some keywords. Uh, they are election, vote, decision, and conscience. And the big idea here is that in America, every voter, uh, every person over 18 who is an American citizen, uh, makes a decision about who to vote for. And when they vote, they're exercising a precious right. And voting looks uh, different depending on where you are in the country, uh, what type of community you live in. And Norman Rockwell captured a voting uh, experience in one town in Iowa um, in 1944 with this image. But Throughout America's history, uh, this scene has played uh, in different ways with different characters um, throughout our history. So, so let's look at what's happening here. Uh, there's one character who's looking at us. Who is that? And what is he holding? Um, there's a line of people. What are they getting ready to do? They all look pretty dressed up, like this is an important event. Why do you think people might have dressed up in 1944? And what do you notice about what they're wearing? What do you notice about their shoes? Um, they're in a space that may be familiar to some of you. Um, I'm actually going to tell you, it's, this, it's a school gym. And is your school gymnasium ever used for other important things? Um, so this is a school gymnasium that's being used to, for voting. And there are people who are checking voters in. What are they wearing? They're wearing, one thing they're wearing is coats. Why do you think they might be wearing their warm coats on this day? There are also people checking to make sure everything is are those checkers. And what are they doing? Um, on the right, you'll see a booth with curtains and there's, there's a board inside that um, has some interesting, uh, you know, it, it looks like it has tabs to it. And um, we're not sure exactly what that is, um, but Stephanie will have a little more to share about it. And then there's also a pet. Uh, who is the animal in this picture and why did Norman Rockwell Museum or why did Norman Rockwell put that animal there? Um, Stephanie, you have some fun facts about this image. Um, would you like to share them? I'd be happy to. Um, this is a really wonderful picture. There's a lot going on, as Mary said. Um, in 1944, when Norman Rockwell painted it, President Franklin D. Roosevelt was trying to obtain a fourth term as president. And he was going up uh, the Republican Thomas E. Dewey. And of course, President Roosevelt did win the race that year. The other thing that's really fun is that Norman Rockwell, who lived in Arlington, Vermont, traveled to the Midwest to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, to create um, this picture. And the nice thing is that he chose the citizens of Cedar Rapids as the subjects for the work especially the janitor of the elementary school, who was not actually named um, Mr. Whipple. Uh, he was named Edward Bernsdorf. And he was cast as the lead character in all of the images, which we're going to look at in just a few minutes. So um, each of uh, Rockwell's subjects, his models, from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, was paid $5 to pose in the picture. And it was very exciting for the citizens there to see themselves 
on the pages of the Saturday Evening Post when his picture was finished. Mary, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the wonderful other vignettes that Norman Rockwell created to tell this story featuring Mr. Whipple? I do, Stephanie, thanks so much. It's such an interesting story. Um, and one of the important things to think about in voting is that voting does not begin and end when you go to the polls to place your vote. Before you get there, some things happen. And so the first two images talk about that part of the story. Mr. Whipple is in conversation with his wife and his daughter. What do you think they're talking about? Could they be talking about who to vote for? And you'll notice Mr. there is a clue about that, and that is the headline on the newspaper that he is holding behind his back. So we wonder, did he read the newspaper, and now is he checking with his family about how they feel about who to vote for? Is this a family conversation? Um, we think it probably is, and we also think that's a good idea. Um, I'll yeah. just jump in and say they may have some very strong opinions about who he <laughs> should vote for. But what he is thinking about is who do I feel most comfortable voting for? That's right. And that's where we get to conscience, isn't it, Stephanie? That at the end of the day, each voter votes based on their own conscience, their own decisions. All of this research and reading and talking with family and friends is important, but at the end of the day, each one of us makes our own decision. And that's an important part of the process. In the next image, uh, Mr. Whipple is talking with other people, maybe not family members now, but he's out and about in town. He's got his umbrella. And again, it looks like there's some very strong um, opinions being shared here. Uh, in this scenario, what is Mr. Whipple doing with his newspaper? So what do you think about that, Stephanie? What do you think the role of the newspaper is in these images? You know, I think that Mr. Whipple is showing that he is an educated voter. He has read a lot about the candidates. He is trying to understand what their positions are on and how they would lead and that is going to give him the information to make his decision so that newspaper really tells us that he is educating himself and that's what we all have to do that is such a good point so now in the next image he's he's in the voting booth and at this point we notice that the newspaper is in a different place it's actually on the ground and that's really interesting because at this point, his education is complete, isn't it, Stephanie? And now he's making his decision. Um, and he doesn't need his newspaper. In fact, it's dropped. Uh, he's alone and he's making a decision that is his own. Absolutely, he is ready to go. And uh, I think he's excited about it. Yes, as we all are to vote, right? Like this is, this is what sustains democracy. In the final image, he has uh, come out of the voting booth. He's facing out and looking at the world. And we see, we have a sense that things went his way. And we wonder, what do you notice in this image uh, that suggests to you that his person won the election? What do you notice, Stephanie? You know, I love the confetti that is flying all around him. And here, Mr. Whipple looks very confident for the first time in all of these images. He looks straight out at us. His arms are folded. And behind him, there's a great party going on. There is a soldier, uh, maybe with a friend. And they even have um, wonderful striped megaphones and maybe they're kind of announcing that uh, their candidate won as well. Mary, are there some things that we should all be thinking about or doing in relation to this piece? Stephanie, I think that this image invites us to think about our own voting stories and it would be really interesting for people watching this to think about and talk with their family and their friends about where did they vote? Where did they sign up? Who did they 
talk with, what was the research to figure out uh, what to do? And how many different opinions did they hear? And then how did, how did um, they decide how to cast their own personal vote according to their conscience? And then I think the next piece that could be really fun is to draw a sequential story of that process based on where you live uh, in your town or city. Um, what do those conversations look like? Who's in them? Uh, who's at the polls? And what does the celebration or the sadness after voting look like? Thanks for being with us.